Hello brethren, good morning. You are welcome to today's family devotional message number 101. God bless you as you listen. Kindly remember to subscribe to our channel. Please share our videos with other people so that they can profit from them. And like our videos Press the notification button so that you get to know when we upload new videos. Kindly also pass your comments as you deem fit. Uh, the, my name is Pastor Yemi Omoboyega, and with me is my wife, Pastor Mrs. Mary Omoboyega. The church we are ministering from is the Gospel Truth International Ministries in Yekiti, Yekiti State in Nigeria. God bless you as you listen. Today we are going to be looking at the topic, be courageous, be courageous. And we are going to be taking our Bible passages from the book of, the books of Psalm 44, 1 to 12. Psalm 44, verse 1 to 12. Luke 13. Luke 13. 31 to 14. From 31 to chapter 14, verse 14. And then we're going to take Deuteronomy 15. 1 to 16, 20. 1 to chapter 16, verse 20. You can see that we are covering quite a wide uh, number of passages, which... I know you are going to profit from as the Lord God Almighty lives. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to appreciate you this morning for yet another opportunity, not only to be alive, but to be in your presence this morning. We thank you indeed for the past messages. We appreciate you for this one in advance. We thank you, Lord, even for your children who are listening to the sound of my voice this morning. I want to thank you because you give them the heart of humility to be in your presence. Daddy, we thank you for our lives. Thank you for our nations. Thank you for planet Earth and all our contents. We appreciate you, but for you, we would have been able to do nothing. We appreciate you, but you never left us alone. Accept our thanksgiving in your name. Thank you particularly for Nigeria. The various reports here and there, full of evil reports. Daddy, we know yet you are our God. In you we trust, and you we have our hope, and in you we know that we are secured. Accept our thanksgiving in Yahushua's name. Mighty Father, we come before your throne of mercy this morning. All our iniquities, please forgive us in Yahushua's name. Daddy, we pray that and oh lord god almighty we also remember those that sinned against us we forgive them now please forgive them on our behalf in Yahushua's name mighty father today is another beautiful day please let it be a day we shall receive good news in Yahushua's name mighty father we pray everything that we need to make today a day of fulfillment in our lives please grant unto us all in Yahushua's name Meet us at the point of all our needs in Yehoshua's name. Thank you, blessed Father. As we go, Lord, go with us. In Yehoshua's mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Yes, the topic we are going to treat, like I said, is the book of Amisdom. Be courageous. Let's go ahead. We have heard it with our head, oh God. Mm -hmm. Our ancestors have told us mm -hmm. what you did in their days. Mm -hmm. In the days long ago, mm -hmm. with your hand, you drove out the nations mm -hmm. and planted our ancestors. Mm -hmm. You caused the peoples mm -hmm. and made our ancestors flourish. Mm -hmm. It was not by their sword that they won the land, nor did their arm bring them victory. Mm -hmm. It was your right hand, your mm -hmm. arm and the light of your feet, for you love them. You are my king and my God, who decrees victories for Jacob. Through you, you push back our enemies. Through your name, you trample our foes. I put no trust in my bow, 
My sword does not bring me victory, but you give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversaries to shame. In God we make our boast all day long, and we will praise your name forever. But now you have rejected and humbled us. You no longer go out with our armies. You made us retreat before the enemy, and our adversaries have plundered us. You gave us up to be devoured like sheep, and have scattered us among the nations. You sold your people for a pittance, gaining nothing from their sale. Praise the Lord. Amen. We want to thank God Almighty for that passage, which is the opening part of uh, today's ministration. Um, it opened with remembering the past remembering the past if there is anything that um, we should remember the past for is for the goodness and the mercies of God, the Lord God Almighty our Creator who has always been on our side who is and will always be on our side. You see, um, Yoruba will say, when you continue to remember the past, he said, you will continue to kind of sorrow. May sorrow not be our portion in Yehoshua's name. Therefore, there are two things you can do concerning the past. And that is, you can remember the past and be sorrowful. And that is why our people will say, in the good old days. <laughs> Amen. Then when people are saying, ah, in those good old days, it means that they are sorrowful of their present. And the second thing you can do with your past is to remember, to count your blessings. Remember what the Lord has done for you. You see, those who are saying in the good old in the old days, it means that they are remembering with nostalgia the days they have spent that appear to be joyful in their lives and things are no longer so. But when you remember the past from the perspective of what the Lord God Almighty has done for you, you will know that you have made serious progress, you have been blessed. You actually have progressed instead of uh, regressing, as you think. And you will have cause to do what? To thank God. That's what the psalmist is saying here. He say, I remember, you see, what you did for us in the past. You took us through the Red Sea, and then you fought for our ancestors. You fought for our, for our armies. You did everything. It is not that we are taking the land because we deserve to take it, but because you gave it because of your love towards us. So when you remember all these things, what is it that comes to you? A heart of gratitude. In fact, it's joy, it's hope, it's peace, it's happiness in whatever form that you may express it. Which means it's not a question of, oh, in the good old days. No, there, as it is, yes, good old days now are the victories that the Lord has given to you. But how are you remembering? Is it for thanksgiving purposes or for sorrowful purposes? Now, you should always remember your past for goodness, for the goodness and the mercies of the, of the Lord, so that the resultant effect is that you will be encouraged, you will be motivated, you will be inspired, you will be able to have a hope of a better tomorrow. Amen. Not lamenting. Yes, the prices of fuel used to, the price of uh, PMS used to be, when I first bought my first car in this world, in 1982 or so, a, a, a liter of fuel used to sell for four naira per liter. You can see. And if you have a vehicle that has like 15, 20 liters, you know what that means. It doesn't cost so much. But today now, uh, it costs as much as six, seven hundred naira per liter. You can see. But yet, God has made it that I'm still able to buy, to fuel my car, and still be able to move around. 
Amen. So what would I say the Lord has not done for me? So if I was buying it when it was four naira and I'm able to buy it when it's six hundred and or seven hundred naira. So what is so special about the past? It means God made me relevant in the past and He has still made He's still making me relevant in the present. That alone deserves that I give glory to God Almighty. And that is what uh, the psalmist is saying here. That yes, the past it was God that was giving him victory. And is it the same God that was giving us victory? So our present, God is giving us victory and he will continue to give us victory. And we are hopeful that even our future, our victory is sure. May the Lord God Almighty bless. Let us always remember God with the heart of gratitude, not with the heart of lamentation, not with the heart of sorrow, which is predominantly the world's stuff. As it is, may God Almighty continue to prosper our ways we will have cause to be joyful in Yehoshua's name let's go ahead what the Lord visited acknowledged mm. God for everything he did yeah. let your boast be in Christ mm -hmm. when we are made to stoop mm -hmm. God made it for good mm -hmm. put your trust in God mm -hmm. Pharisees wanted to kill Christ Mm -hmm. But Christ resolved to teach his goal. Mm -hmm. Christ to reach his goal. Yes. We're already in New Testament. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The review I made is about the Old Testament. Let's go to the New Testament. Now, the Pharisees, of course, you know them. They are the teachers of the Lord. They are the scribes. They are the rabbis. They are the religious leaders and all that. They think they knew the law. Yeah, they knew the law quite well. But did not understand it. There is difference between knowing something. Uh, my neighbor and I were chatting one day. He's an Igbo guy. You know, I was talking. Uh, in Yoruba, I was asking him, did you hear? He said he heard. But hearing is one thing. Understanding is another. He said, I heard, but I don't understand. You see? There is the difference. The rabbis, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they knew the law inside out, but did not understand it. If not, how would it be that throughout Genesis to Revelation, all that was emphasized was that the religion that God accepts, according to James 1.27, James 1.27 is the one that is takes care of the widow, the poor, the needy, the orphans, and that we should take good cognizance of them and help them. And even from... Um, um, the book of uh, Luke to, um, 40, sorry, Luke 11, verse 40 to 41. It still talks about the same thing that you should do justice to the poor, to the, to the needy, to the needy. Then in the book of Matthew 23, 23, it still says the same thing. The book of um, Matthew 22, verse 37 to 39, talk to for Christ himself talking, says, what you shall love your God with the whole of your heart, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. That all these things is summary of the law. But the rabbis, they read all these things, they taught the Bible, they taught the laws, and so on and so forth. But yet, they knew them, but they never understood them. That you know, serving God is simple. Just do His commandments, and do not exploit others. And even till today. It's even got to the worst in our days in the sense that we now mix the Old Testament with the New Testament such that because it profits us, for instance, we are talking of so many rituals that we go through in the church. When we mix the Old with the New Testament, we cause confusion. We use it to exploit others. Initially, we thought it was true ignorance, but it became clear later that it was the greed or because of the gain that we are gaining. From it. That's why we are still taking something like tithes today. We should do first fruit and all that, which are legal and which are legalistic and with the law themselves erased by God. So you can now see that, you know, we are still, we are aware as Bible did not want us to put agonies in the lives of the people of the church. That's why it says, whatever you will give. To the church give it with i mean from your heart voluntarily otherwise it will be as if you are forced 
who does not know that something like the tithes we are talking about like by is by force amen which god is against now whatever you will do do it as if you are doing unto the lord and do it with the whole of your heart and your being and most importantly love your neighbor as yourself amen god made it for you put your trust in god pharisees wanted to kill christ but Christ resolved to reach his goal. Christ rebuked Pharisees. Another thing you need to do, like the topic says, is be courageous. Every time throughout Christ's ministry, the plan of the church leaders, the teachers of the law, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they plotted all along. They are supposedly to be the people that you know better. But unfortunately, they would have never understand anything. But they knew, but they didn't understand. So because of their lack of understanding, they were doing the opposite of what Christ wanted them to do. And what was their goal? They were to kill the Messiah. They were always looking for fault. And here, again, they plotted against him. But Christ was one thing, which is the topic of today, be courageous. Christ was courageous in ensuring that he is focused and he pursued his focus in spite of the opposition take note he pursued his focus which is giving us the kingdom of god saving us in spite of the opposition that followed that trailed his ministry amen they wanted to kill him he knew that but that did not discourage him now you may have been threatened. You go, you go to school and somebody is telling you that you can't make it, this and that. And, you, you know, if care is not taken, you get discouraged. Or somebody is telling you, the school I'm going to does not even give money. Yes, school does not give money, but shows you the way to make money. And anything that shows you the way to get your life better is good for you. Do not be discouraged by what people are saying. Or you are into a business and it's failing and it's failing. Yes. Keep trying until God answers your prayer. Sometimes you need to diversify to what may be better. But God will give you the wisdom on what and how to do it. And therefore, so that your story will not be like the story of a man who was digging for gold. And it has only one foot to reach his goal. And he gave up. You will not give up at the point of your breakthrough in Yehoshua's name. So, Christ was courageous in going ahead and persisting. I remember in those days when I was into the secretarial uh, studies in this world, some of my friends discovered me and said it was a woman's job. And I now said that I would do it better than a woman would do. And, I, because, and because of that, instead of being discouraged, I put more effort. And to God be the glory, when it was time for me to quit the line, God made it clear to me. And I was able to change and to another profession which will give me a lifelong career amen because in the secretarial study yes truly if you work hard within 10 years you get to the peak of it what next that's the question god answered that when i got there but i didn't allow the discouragement of the others to discourage me then i got emboldened the more i was discouraged amen and later on i came up with higher giant strides in some other professions till i had my career successfully, you know, in this world. So, please do not be discouraged. Always be courageous. Some people may frighten you. Even, there are so many other instances when you are taking a bold step, even yourself, in your own heart or heart. The, devil's, uh, the devil may walk on your heart to say, do not try, do not take the risk. I recommend to you the book of um, this guy, um, Gifted and uh, Ben Carson. Say, take the risk. I recommend that you go and read that book. Everything in this world is a risk. You do a business, it fails. Take another risk. You do, you go into, you know, uh, eventually it fails. Go take another risk. If you are afraid of risk taking, you will not wear the crown. Say, no cross, no crown. Christ took the risk and he won. You shall win in Yehoshua's name. Therefore, you should be courageous in whatever you are doing. Don't be easily chickened out, out of 
the ventures that you have chosen. Amen. I want to tell you, if you are jumping from one thing to another every now and then, you see, you will discover that you may end up mastering nothing. So it's good that you must really have a proven case that what you are venturing into will not work before you drop it for another. And you have to do that one also to a point. <coughs> if it doesn't work, God will let you know to change. Please go ahead. Enemies who are watching us, as Pharisees who are watching Christ. Pharisees, of course, like I said, they were supposed to be leaders of the um, work of God, religious leaders. They, but unfortunately, they were the enemies of the Messiah they are preaching about. Amen. So, many of our preachers today, even people have to be careful. We leaders have to be careful. We don't, suddenly, we, there's a thin line between, be, between the, being the enemy of God and being a friend of God. But when you are doing things that are making life difficult for your converts, then you become the enemy of God because he wants you to win them and give them peace and give them joy and give them assurance and hope of salvation. But when what you are doing is negating that, is driving them away, just like someone said, he said today, we have many more people outside the church, outside of the church now than inside the church because of the yokes that we, the church leaders, have placed upon the people which have discouraged them. You see? So when we are doing that, we are becoming the enemies of God. So let us make sure that we are not the enemy of God. But the rabbis, they thought they knew, yet they were the enemies of Christ. So they were looking for a way to trap him. Look at what happened when they went to that uh, man's house to go and eat. And the, the Pharisees were watching him, looking for an error. And Christ now knew their mind. He wanted to perform a miracle, and it was incidentally on a Sabbath day, which is contrary to the law, which is what we are always saying. The law does not save anybody. The law condemns. But grace, love, saves. The love forgives. Grace forgives. So, you can now see, the, the people were, the Pharisees were, they, want, they, they had their evil <coughs> intent. But Christ now wanted to heal that person. Say, okay, oh, brethren, rabbis, babas, today is Sunday, and this is a man that has problem. What can, can you, what can we do? Uh, is it lawful for me to um, heal anybody on the sun on the Sabbath day? Of course, he knew the answer that it was not lawful. <laughs> Amen. But in the case of love, you can do anything at any point in time once it is a good thing. You see, it doesn't matter whether it is Sunday. Then. They now he asked that question and he went ahead and he saw a man that was uh, having issues and he healed him and he now came back to them and said, Look, how many of you will your child be fall into a ditch on a Sabbath day? And you say, Because the law forbids you doing anything on a Sabbath day, you will not rescue that child. You see, that's to tell you the law is for the man, not the man for the law. So when there is need to break the law, something that's why i say the simple example i always give is that you are working for an employer and there is a need for you to sacrifice even on a sunday to come and work and that need is obvious that you know i'm not talking of those who run away who are not inclined towards god but who want to do their own will who are using the work as an excuse you know but there is a need for you to come to work or do extra or over time to make sure that your organization reaches a goal. You know, you should be able to do that irrespective of whether it is a Sunday or a Saturday or whatever day of the week or even irrespective of whether your closing time is 4 o'clock. You see, those who excel in their careers are people that give in extra time and without even necessarily asking for reward for it. Reward God Himself rewards them because the employers, when the time comes, they will remember those who have who are resilient and persistent that makes the good success to come and they will reward them. So do not be lazy and hide under the yoke of religion. Amen. <coughs> yes, do not take the place of honor, rather. Invited to take place of okay, this one is telling us that look, we should always take the position of humility in whatever we do. We should never 
be the type that is uh, self-centered anxious for big things you could e be eager for good things but not be anxious you see there is something be different between be eager for something good always pushing forward to move make your life better but when you give your life i mean you prefer that to serving your god or you put god at the background and you think you can achieve you are joking be anxious for nothing such that you think that if, if you don't do it by your own way that you will not get therefore you can resort into manipulation stealing lying and all sorts of ungodly acts no that is not what is allowed pursue your ambition let god be your backbone and then um without greed for gain amen don't give excuses uh, amen please go ahead do not exalt yourself when you go to a party uh -huh. particularly the poor. be humble when you go to parties or to any place let them invite you to high places don't push yourself some people say if you don't push yourself nobody will push you uh, it is true in an extent that you need to be pushful in terms of you know exploring new grounds but not when you see you are in a congregation or you are in the midst of people and then you are forcing yourself over and above them no that's not it you need to push you and identify new opportunity and taking new risks that will lead to something good but do not manipulate others to get it so when you are that's the example of the parable he gave here that look if you are invited to a party stay at a lowly place so that your guests will invite you to the tabletop when you get there you'll be honored but if you place yourself in a place in high table before you are invited then you may be dethroned and that will be disgraceful so let us be uh, careful in whatever we do yeah christ was courageous mm -hmm. with pharisees now the pharisees you know they are the babas like just like we are having today in our church you have the geos you have the ministers the bishops and all that we need to be careful if our geos are doing what is not right if i am doing what is not right please be courageous to tell me not necessarily by way of abuse let me know that which i'm doing that is wrong likewise if we are as the we call us uh, self junior ministers see what our babas in in the ministry are doing that is contrary to the word of god like we said you know we should be bold and courageous enough to let our parents, our fathers know, our geos know. Even if children, children, do not say because they are young. You see, don't resort to answers. But what you will do is find out that point where daddy and mommy, they are wrong. It's not that you go and confront them by a fight, no. But let them know, using the basis of the word of God, that ah, daddy, mommy, this thing, it doesn't seem to. I know there are some parents, you know, our cultural setting is that children have no have no voice. Junior ones have no voice, no matter your age. You see, a 60-year-old father and a 30-year-old son. The 30-year-old son sees something that is correct and believes that the parents are doing it wrongly. And it's all, what, what does he do? And wanted to correct, but because of the fear that the parents will shout him or her down. That is why we parents, hey, children may be our savior, young ones. Let us be careful. Let us give them a listening ear. And then we uh, children, let us make sure that in spite of our trying to correct our daddies and mommies or our, our we junior ministers trying to correct our elders in the ministry, we should give honor to whom honor is due. It's not to abuse them, it's not to say uh, whatever, but let us correct them in love. As the Bible says, let's tell them. Let's be bold to say the truth about what we are saying. Because knowing the truth and not saying it, I mean, we'll be accountable for it on the judgment day because we know the truth, which is supposed to tell, set people free. And when, that is why even in our um, approach, that's why sometimes... You even leave the elders alone and talk to the people that are being uh, kind of exploited or people that 
are being deprived of their destinies, you talk to them so that even if the papas will shout you down, the people who are listening, who are, being, who are the victims of all these decisions, they will also hear, at least, uh, they will stop being fooled because they would disobey that which is ungodly. Amen. It's very important. So Christ was courageous in rebuking even them. Even though we are junior and all that, we can still tell our elders that what they are doing is not godly, especially when we are, sight, we are certain of it. Amen. And when we, the elders, hear it, don't let us take it for enmity. Let us uh, take corrections. Amen. So that the life of the people will move forward. Amen. And our own lives too. Amen. Christ was courageous with the Pharisees by confronting them. He also, confronted. Also, be compassionate. Mm -hmm. Christ died to protect You see, us. Christ was courageous in rebuking the elders. Like I said, honor the elders, but tell them that which is wrong in their lives so that they can correct it. It is even for their own benefit. So, if we don't want them to go to hellfire, we should be able to tell them what will take them to heaven, the kingdom of God. Then, the uh, Christ was also courageous. You know, he knew he was going to die. He did not shy away. You know, one or two times he spoke. He said, if it were possible, I would have wished that this thing, you know, this cup, I did not drink of it. But because it is the will of God, he said, let not my will be done, but the will of he who sent me. Therefore, let us be courageous. You see, when you want to become somebody in life, you must be courageous in pursuing that goal that will take you there. You want to make money, you should be ready to work hard. You should be courageous in taking up a career or two that will lead you there. Not that you demonstrate laziness and you are wishing for miracles. That's not me, that's magic. And just God is not a magician. So let us be courageous in whatever we do. Yes, next. That is his compassion. Conceal long debt. Cancel long debt. Okay, death. now going to Deuteronomy chapter 15 to 16. You see, in this place, even the Bible set the good examples, even in the Old Testament. You see, there is a level to which you overlook certain things. They are categorized into two here. For instance, somebody is owing you. is a fellow Christian like you. You should treat him specially. After some time, you overlook that indebtedness. This, the, the limit I was set here in the Bible is uh, seven years. After seven years, even all your slaves, you should free them. And don't let them go empty-handed. Empower them. Don't free them into poverty. You see, some say, well, I give you independence, but um, don't free them into poverty. Give them the skill, the, the skill acquisition that they can practice to become somebody on their own. Then, because, and especially with the Israelites, you should not, then the same thing with us. Now, we Christians should treat fellow men well, whether they are even Christians or not. Okay? But, in, in Christianity, the church is set up so that we'll be able to meet each other's need. All right? Even in terms of wealth, said they sold all they had, they brought it before the apostles, and they shared it according to everybody's need, so that the need, the rich is not richer, the poorer getting poorer, so that everybody went and they were giving according to their needs. Amen. So we should be able to meet the need of one another. That is the essence of the church. Apart from spiritual need, even physical need. That's why it is good to give to the church of God. It is good. But the church of God herself must remember it is given to them for redistribution. Second Corinthians chapter 8. For redistribution to the poor, to the needy, even to the rich. The rich, the richest, the richest needs is different from the poor, uh, poor people's needs. What do they need? Their own is not money, but the poor needs money. They own many prayers. Pray for them richly. And whatever you are sharing, share their own portion to them, remembering that they too are part of it. So God does not condemn anybody, rich and the poor. 
but he has special um, mind towards the poor because they are incapacitated by the status of their life. So we should not aggravate their problems. Amen. Please go ahead. Counsel long day. If you fully obey the Lord, He will bless you. Be open handed. Give generously. Give generously. Give. The principle of giving is from Genesis to Revelation is there. If you like, it says, Give, it shall be given unto you, good measure. Press down, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. If you are the stingy type, you are blocking your ways to prosperity. All right? Do, but do not be lured. Do not be manipulated into giving. Contrary to your own wishes, you should give voluntarily. All right? You should give voluntarily to the church of God. You should give voluntarily to your pastor. You give voluntarily. Let this charity begin at home. You see, the, 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 in the early Israelite days, they free all the people that owe you any debt after seven years, especially the Israelites. Free the slaves. Especially, the, you see, he's telling you even from among your own people, from your family, start being a forgiver and be generous towards them. Do whatever you let your charity begin at home. Then do likewise to others outside your immediate family. Yes. Slaves will be released every seven years. Mm -hmm. Do not release them empty-handed. Mm -hmm. Take care of your domestic helpers mm -hmm. and employees. Take good Always care. Always remember the days Lord did something. Amen. In your life. Take good care of your domestic helpers, the juniors. The younger ones, the children, the children that the Lord has given to you. Take good care of your wives. Take good care of your husbands. Take good care of your parents. Take good care of your pastors. Take good care of your employers by rendering, you know, honest services and by protecting their interests. Also, take good care of your masters, not in matter of slavery or now today, but take good care of whoever. Is an elder to you. Take good care of the young ones. Take good care of your community. Pay your security bills. I mean, join them in doing community work, making sure that there is peace everywhere. Take be your brother's keeper. Take good care. That's what God has sent us to do. If we have been doing all this, life would have been better than it is today. You see, do not find yourself in criminality. Do not choose criminality. Do not prefer criminality over being living a decent life. Fear God. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of the way of wisdom. Uh, the book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. Fools despise it. Do not be a fool. Fear your God in whatever you do. Amen. Yeah. Always remember the day the Lord did something in your life. Mm -hmm. Where the Lord God will choose mm -hmm. with your Passover offering. Now, even in the Old Testament, <clears throat> when Passover offering was being given and uh, tithes were being taken. In fact, if you are going to use give them where the Lord God Almighty has appointed. You can equate that today with the Church of God because the place that people meet together to encourage one another, to teach and preach the Word of God, to study the Word of God. So do not forsake the assembly of the saints. Alright? So you need to remember that no matter what you are, no matter who you are, you still need to follow the will of God in whatever you do. So endeavor to always do good. Always do good and nothing but good. And you will be on your way to the path of righteousness. May the Lord God Almighty bless his word. I hope you've been blessed this morning. Yes, any other thing, ma'am? What was the last one? Remember the priest, widow and orphans. Uh -huh. Nobody should come to the house of God empty handed. Uh -huh. You see? You should never take bribe. Okay, many of our churches today say, don't come to the house of God empty handed. This is where they take their Bible passage from. It's correct. You see, when you have come to the house of God with the heart of gratitude, and give generously to the work of God. It is very vital that you do that. So do not be stingy.
towards the work of God. You see, do not you see let it let your desire be that even when as you are going to the church of God, if you need, pray in advance that God should provide for you. Do not delight in going to the house of God empty handed. Even do not go delight in going to visit people empty handed. Do not delight in going to your village. You have been living far away and then you want to come back home. Do not delight in going there empty handed. Try and work and make money and then give something to some people when you come. Because you don't know. You may be blessing angels. The little money you give to the old people, to the aged people, to the young ones, they are praying for you and these prayers work. So many people run away from home because they don't want to give. How long will you run? Wherever you are, whatever you are running away from, we catch up with you. So why not be wise and give, you know, generously in whatever circumstances you have. And many things to give. It could be material things, it could be spiritual gifts like we are giving now. It could be prayers, it could be telephone call, it could be airtime, it could be data, it could be anything. Just give whatever you feel you can give. Without being prompted, the Lord God Almighty will bless you in Yehoshua's name. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. Oh, before we do that, did mommy have any comments? Comments? In all our undertakings, we should be courageous. We should be courageous in all our undertakings. Don't be afraid. Some people say if you give, they will kill you. Be courageous and give. Nobody will kill you. They will say if you do good, you will be... Yeah, yes, people hide under the... Uh, or anyone like Yoruba will say that is do your uh, whatever, give your gestures uh, carefully. This and be careful so that you don't get hurt. Well, God will guide you. Uh, if you are doing good, evil cannot overpower you. But don't do it boastfully. Do let your pride be in Christ. So do it according to the will of God, not because you want to attract attention from anybody. Amen. God bless you. Father, we just want to thank you once again for your wonderful word this morning. We appreciate you for message 101 that we are just listening unto the world. Everlasting Father, bless this message. Let it touch the hearts of your people for the better. Let it change their lives for the better. In your wish, as I that am preaching, we that are ministering, Everlasting Father, let this ministration touch us positively. In Yehoshua's name. Thank you, blessed Father. As we go out now and we go courageously, because the spirit you gave to us is not the feel of fear or timidity. Therefore, Lord, even as we are going, continuously give us victory in everything we lay our hands upon in Yehoshua's name. Thank you, blessed Father. Glory be to your name. In Yehoshua's mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you.